Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us technical analysis. It's a brand new year. Happy new year to you all and I hope you all had a great um, Christmas and new years. So finally back to the charts and uh, <clears throat> it's been a while. Uh, took the uh, Christmas off and the New Year's, so you know, back to uh, the trading, and we're starting off this year, you know, with uh, with a bang, really. Um, starting off on the fundamentals and sentiment, you know, we've got the headlines really is about Iran and um, the U.S. Um, uh, uh, killing the uh, commander, one of the commanders from, you know, the uh, from Iran, Qasim Soleimani, I think that's his, how you pronounce his name, and uh, potentially, you know, what we could have is um, escalating tensions, potential war, you know, worst case scenario in that region. So, um, what we have going on is um, a flight to safe havens. So safe haven in currency land is the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. So um, yeah, we uh, the uh, the money and the investors are really going into uh, safe haven assets at the moment. And if you want to know what basically safe haven assets are, risk on and risk off, I'll put a link to the Investopedia um, uh, education site and uh, risk off, you know, pretty much explained here, but what risk off behavior really is, is uh, is when there is a tension, you know, uncertainty um, in, in the markets, then uh, basically investors will put their money into safe haven assets like gold, um, government treasury bonds, as well as uh, safe haven currencies like this, the yen and the Swiss franc. So, uh, um, you can basically see what's going to be happening on a price chart um, uh, as far as uh, you know where where the money is potentially going uh, this week and into the potential future if this carries on. But looking at the week ahead, the economic calendar uh, fundamentally um, it says on Trading Economics, which is a great site, use this daily. Um, will be busier in the coming week as the U.S. release its December jobs report. Uh, alongside foreign trade data and ISM non-factoring PMI elsewhere, important data um, to follow include China services PMI, and consumer and producer prices, eurozone inflation. That's very important because um, uh, the, the the eurozone and the, the European Central Bank um, are trying to achieve their two percent inflation target, and uh, they're really quite far away from that. So, uh, depending on where inflation comes in, will determine their monetary policy. Germany factory orders that's important as well because Germany are Europe's powerhouse, and if Germany are um, slumping regarding um, their economy, then it affects pretty much the rest of Europe. Um, Japanese markets are open on Monday as investors return from New Year's holidays. So we're back to pretty much, um, you know, uh, to normal come Monday, uh, fundamentally. So, um, yeah, let's look now at the technicals and what I'm going to do as we've got a brand new year, I'm going to start off with uh, brand new charts. And the Dow Jones dollar index is the one I'm going to be starting off on and really going through taking my time. Um, even though my throat is, uh, I'm recovering from a cold. Um, I'll go through this uh, for, for all the new traders out there and even the experienced ones and basically how I uh, go through, you know, plotting supply and demand zones. Um, normally I have these already on the charts. I'm going through the analysis, but I'll uh, make the exception today as it's a brand new year. So you can kind of see the, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the thought process behind this. Also, as well, if you're not, if you don't understand, this is not rally based drop, drop based rally. This is um, higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, lower lows, and proof of value trading. Yeah, um, you can watch uh, some of my YouTube videos um, on the channel. You know, the beginner um, beginner's guide to supply and demand, as well as some others um, popular ones, and that would basically show you how to. Uh, plot supply and demand and how I plot supply and demand. So you may want to check that out before you watch this video and then, you know, just come back and, uh, and have a have a look and you'll understand a bit better what exactly I'm talking about when I plot my demand and supply zone. So Dow Jones dollar index, the, um, we had a bit of a sell-off over Christmas, which was pretty much predicted, um, but also 
as we're buyers, well, I'm a buyer of the dollar. Um, I just look for a buying opportunity really down here, not necessarily on the on the dollar index, but looking for um, confluence. So the dollar index is pretty much a, a measure of dollar strength against major currencies like the euro, yen, uh, pound, and also the Aussie. So um, if we were looking at any kind of demand zones where this price was potentially going to come down into, that would have been a demand zone right there. Yeah, so we've got, you know, um, the last uh, bearish candle there before prices make a new high. So you've got higher highs, higher lows. So you've got to move up, move down, move up. There we go. So that's why I'm drawing that there. You also have, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for now. So yeah, that zone there, you've got some zones below it, but no one really need to kind of draw them at the moment. It kind of clutters the chart a little bit, or I can just basically drag that down to here. And then there's another one right here. we have got a bit of a demand zone right there right in that zone there and again why is that it's because you've got this is the last bearish candle before prices make new highs right and start taking out you know you've got low lower highs lower lows and then you've got this move up yeah there higher highs higher lows are being made so once prices start to make these higher highs higher lows that becomes an area of demand yeah, so let me just delete these, take these off the chart. So that's demand sorted. And now when it comes to supply, what we've got is we've got a level of supply right here. Right there, supply. And then we've got another area of supply right here again. Why are these there? Because these are the last bullish candles before prices make new lows yeah you can blatantly see that there's supply there also here as well last bullish candle Let me draw it from the last bullish candles open price to the high last bullish candle open price to the high again youtube videos link is in the description box um if you want to find out a bit more about how i go about uh plotting these zones so uh once we've got those two then i'm pretty much looking at maybe just looking at ranges where prices may potentially range between prices are ranging between probably that high and that low and prices are between that high and that low so the yellow lines represent um 50 percent retracement which is fair value now depending on which one you you want to be a buyer or seller of um obviously we're looking to be a buyer of the dollar so anything you know at the lower end is going to be a bargain price for us so what we're looking for overall is pretty much maybe a pullback down into some sort of demand fresher demand potentially because we've touched this level now once twice so maybe a bit fresher and then we're looking for buy trades as far as the dow jones dollar index if you're looking for a sell trade then you're looking for price to kind of come up here that would be the first bargain area um for actually i wouldn't say bargain area because it's, this is the dow jones dollar index you're not necessarily um there's no quote currency on here but if you think that the uh, the Dow Jones is is overvalued or a bit expensive, I should say, this area overvalued, but expensive at this area, it was deemed expensive in the past. You know, um, there was no definitely no demand there, so it's expensive here. So you know, traders are pretty much you know, not I wouldn't say dumping, but they were you know maybe liquidating their uh, their their dollar holdings. So this was an expensive area. Buyers are buying here now. You can start to see that there is demand coming into the market so in between this high and this low prices are currently at around fair value and that'd be represented as an expensive area so that's what i'm looking at and price to contain between this high and this low so let's see what happens i'm probably looking for a bit of a pullback into this zone around here before looking at getting long um on any of the dollar crosses so dollar yen so dollar yen and again going back to the um, uh, uh, risk on and risk off the yen strengthens in a risk off environment so what we have actually is we've got a large demand zone right here demand 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 right that's large demand zone um, because price is made a new high so you've got move up move down and then a move up so that's a new high so as prices have come back down into this zone you can see where prices have reacted once twice 
And once prices tend to touch demand zones more than once, you know, twice, um, the demand zone um, is no longer, you know, a strong area of demand you can see pretty much here. But now we've come down to the lower end, this fresher area of demand and prices are reacting now. I put out a video, I think last week or the week before, um, about catch pain relief zones in the, in the trade setup and it was really at the bottom here. Now, I'm interested in buying here, but is it a smart a smart move to really buy the dollar when you've got a lot of um, uh, tension in the air? Mm, uh, I don't really think so. So just because I have a trade set up you know, there doesn't mean I'm gonna necessarily enter. What I may do is um, just sit out and wait and if prices continue to come down, this will be the next zone I'll be looking for to get long. Again, if risk on comes back in the market. So let's say, for example, tensions, you know, kind of decrease and, um, you know, things are sorted between Iran and, you know, America, then um, maybe if, it's, if it was the open here, yeah, and things, you know, risk, there's maybe more risk on again and, you know, um, they kind of kiss and make up as unlikely as that is um then i'd be a buyer of the dollar for sure um as this risk off even though i want to be a buyer of the dollar what i may have to do and what maybe you should consider is maybe just entering uh maybe a quarter of of your normal position so if you normally you know trade one percent a position then what you want to maybe look to do is you know trade maybe 0 0.5 um, sorry, 0 0.25, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 percent, just to see, you know, reduce your risk because we're about risk managing risk. We're not about um, and making smarter decisions. We're not about um, just looking at this based off of technical patterns alone. So, um, pretty much, even though I'm looking for a buy here, I haven't seen an entry um, that I'm interested in. And if this level doesn't work, no problem. I'm looking at buying down here potentially, and again, just understanding what the risk sentiment is at the moment um, with regards to the uh, the uh, dollar and the Japanese yen. Sometimes we might we might have to just sit out of this and look at some other pairs to trade like the euro dollar, you know, the pound dollar, etc. Um, from a supply perspective, this is where, you know, the supply zone is put up, up, up top here. So we've got some supply there. And then you go back a little bit further got level there got one right here so yeah decent yeah so right here that's where we got our supply zones so again where price where's prices contained between we contain between this low and this high at the moment from a value range perspective and then we've also got a range between this high and there which is basically about around fair value or it's a bargain area if that's if prices are going to range between this high which they currently are that high and that low so prices may want to range like that <clears throat> or prices may range between this and this either way you know because my bias is for the you know to buy the dollar then that's just the way I'm going to be looking. It makes things a lot easier when I'm uh, looking to take trades because I don't necessarily have to, you know, always look to buy at supply, sorry, buy at demand and sell at supply. And it really catches traders, you know, um, and confuses traders. Um, the next level would be a nice fair value between this low and this high if prices do come down here. And again, risk maybe starts to diminish a little bit and risk on starts to come back in the market. That'd be a nice value area to look to buy the uh, the, the dollar, nice fair value or bargain area at this 107, 106. So uh, yeah, we've got uh, pretty much those zones drawn out. Dollar Swiss. Now Dollar Swiss, I'm actually in this trade and uh, this was a nice, uh, zone and what I'll do is I'll zoom out a little bit and start with my demand zones. So there's a demand zone down here, right there. Again, why is that demand? Because you've got last bearish candle close before prices start to make new highs. It's actually hidden demand right there as well. Let's see. Yeah, she touched that hidden demand zone. 
quite nice. Um, also as well, I took this based off of uh, a CPR level. Um, I'm not gonna go into it in, in this video, but this, <coughs> this was a nice uh, breakout. Excuse my, uh, my, my voice, I'm getting over a cold at the moment. Um, so this was a nice uh, breakout CPR. So setup was pretty much here. Now that we've touched this um, demand zone right here, I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna delete that. So this is the, the demand zone here anyway. So I'm in this um, trade uh, long at the moment. I can't lose in this trade now. Um, as I've taken um, two to one profit on uh, on one position, so I'm letting the second position run. Um, so let's see what else we have from a supply zone perspective. So supply, what we've got is, got that level there. Yeah, so the last bullish candle before price is making the low, and that's really the swing there. We've got another supply zone there and a bit of another one there so a bit of a cluster of supply there then we've also got one at the absolute highs so we've got some lower highs lower lows being made yeah so we've got that move up move down move up move down like that oh, kind of like that yeah so lower highs lower lows being made all right and again, when you get something like this happening, you're thinking to yourself, well, there's a massive cluster of, uh, of, of supply, which, which supply zone is gonna work? You know, um, and what you do is you start to look for horizontal supply, uh, support and resistance zones, because then we've got not only supply and demand traders getting in short potentially here, we're gonna have levels of resistance support resistance resistance support support so if prices come back up here the supply and demand equation is starting to look a bit better because you've got a lot more confluences within this area this wide area of supply in the same way you've got decent support and resistance within that area there at that price zone there where you've got support 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 there bit of resistance so if prices come up to here now that's where you want to look for potential short trades and that's how one of the techniques that we use to uh, to understand how to break down um, wider areas of supply and we use not only horizontal but diagonal and dynamic support and resistance within these areas of confluences so um, so yeah so I think that's it for now from a buy perspective I think we're looking at that, that high to that low. And prices are contained between this high and the, I mean this high and this low. So this now is a bargain area. This was a, proven to be a bargain in the past, way back in September 2018, and is proving to be a potential bargain right now. The Swiss franc does benefit from um, you know risk off a risk off environment. Um, so uh, again, with risk off, you may expect the the, the, the Swiss franc to uh, to strengthen potentially, but also the dollar does also strengthen in the risk off environment as well. So um, let's see what happens. But um, if you want to get long, then you're looking at probably a pullback into here like that. If you want to get short, it's going to be the first area to look for short trades, and you're going to be buying the Swiss franc from there. So if you're looking at trend, some sort. of recent trend continuation type trade that would be the area nice round number as well confluence 0 0.980 right there um, moving on to the dollar cad dollar cad so let me uh, start to look for some demand zones demand so probably around here yeah and again why there because you've got moves being made that are higher so you got move up move down move up move down and higher highs higher lows right there so that makes a new high pull back into that zone price make a new high yeah so this becomes a higher high or higher low this becomes a demand zone we also got another demand zone in that area right there and we can see the price is now down into this demand zone. Quite nice. Um, 
from a supply zone perspective, again, we've got a bit of a cluster of supply. So we'd probably be doing the same thing as we would. I'm probably gonna draw it from around here as we do for the, uh, uh, we did for the uh, um, uh, dollar Swiss, where we start to break down these zones now and start to look for confluence areas within that area there. So I think from what I can see, it looks like it's a bit of support and resistance within that area where you've got support, bit of resistance, support, support, support there, support there, resistance, resistance, support. So if prices come down into this or up into this area here, that's a decent area to look for potential short trades. So uh, yeah, quite decent prices are ranging or prices are caught between this high and this low at the moment. So at the moment we're buying at what a bargain area for the dollar. This would be a this would represent supply zones would, would represent bargain areas for the Canadian dollar. Yeah, this is seen as you know an absolute buy for the uh, Canadian dollar. The Canadian dollar was very you know um, was a bargain area here. So if prices come back up to here, that's a nice area to get short if you're buying a Canadian dollar. Um, and it's also around fair value of the whole range. So that's a uh, that's decent depending on which one you want to be a buyer or seller of. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. So, New Zealand dollar, this was a nice um, short, I was saying to the group, that um, this supply zone looked really nice for several reasons, a nice breakout CPR zone as well. Um, but anyways, we've got supply there, and we've got, I guess, a little bit of supply right there. And if that is a bullish candle close, it looks like it is, then that's supply there. So a couple of levels of supply on the daily um, from a demand zone perspective. We've got demand there. And again, why is that demand? Or why are these levels demand? I'm gonna show you in a sec. So that's there. And then you've got another level there. So if you're looking at it, higher highs, higher lows. So <coughs> prices move up, prices come down, prices move up, here, pull back, prices move up, pull back. And that's a bearish candle, by the way. Bearish candle close, you can see it there. Prices move up. So again, higher lows are areas and, and lows and swing lows are the strongest areas or potentially, you know, the strongest areas of, you know, supply and demand. And there's obviously some more things that we look into um, to determine each, you know, each zone, because each zone isn't, isn't made the same. Um, so there's, uh, you know, other things we do look at as well. So the first demand zone you want to look to get long in is if prices start to come down here, and then that's the first area. If that zone doesn't work here, second, and then, Third, and you have to be a really a believer in the New Zealand dollar. Why the New Zealand dollar, from a fundamental perspective, is a bargain at this price, at this, at these price zones. Or if you want to be a buyer of the New Zealand of the US dollar, then you're looking at obviously getting short. Me, I would probably be looking at the short side. Um, so any kind of pullbacks into this zone here, my bias is to the short side. It doesn't mean that you can't get long. Um, you know, traders can. Uh, do what they want but I'm more fundamentally driven so I'd be looking at getting um, short especially due to the fact that we really haven't had a major pullback for a few weeks so if I can get an opportunity to get in short I wanted to get in short around here but it was over the Christmas period New Year's period so um, wasn't really looking to trade much if at all around this period even though I did enter on the uh, dollar Swiss but um uh, I wasn't looking to enter too many dollar trades um, but yeah so I'm looking at if potentially we can get a pullback any kind of short trades um, on the dollar um, so that's pretty much it where's prices ranging between we've got wide range between that high and that low a couple of hundred pips so we're at the top of a nice range where prices potentially make one to uh, 
you know range between you know at the moment so prices are this this is a, a, a potential bargain area for the um, for the dollar it was a bargain area here so potential bargain areas here this would be a bargain area for the New Zealand dollar as people traders were buying you know New Zealand dollar down here if prices do come down here this would be another bargain area potentially for the New Zealand dollar so again proof of value you know this is proven value this is proven value so when prices come back up here again if the fundamentals are still the same we have a decent probability of a, a, a reaction around there um, and traders either taking sorry taking profit from this area here as well as entering new positions short so that's where we want to look for uh, some short trades um, if we want to be a buyer of the US dollar at this exchange rate moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar so um, again let's go through some supply and demand zones from a supply perspective uh, prices really kind of reacted off of I would say I can just zoom in a little bit probably from here to here <clears throat> then we had some more supply from here to here so let's uh, delete that so there we are that's where the supply was it was reacting from um, again I was looking to potentially get uh, short in this area didn't see an entry but looking to get short on this on this trade at some point <clears throat> um, and we do have actually prices have made a new supply zone right here so uh, if we're looking at demand we've got a nice demand zone there demand we've also got some demand from there to there probably this whole area really might just put it down so the whole area is, is demand and then we've got another one right here so you can see how prices have come down into this area of demand and kind of reacted off it now prices are contained between this high and this low uh, the odd salt so you can start to see now when prices pull back to fair value and you want it to get short as a fair value price or start to get you know the higher this goes it starts to become cheaper for the US dollar yeah the, the further down we go and you want to be a buyer of the British pound this is potentially the cheapest area as you can see buyers got in here so now if we get a pullback this potentially may be a nice buy in the future so uh, again my bias is to you know pound short dollar long so I'm looking for if prices can really kind of come up to this area especially this higher zone um, I'm looking to be a seller around here of course things can change but um, fundamentally uh, the, the, the British pound hasn't got that much fundamentally going for it so I'll be uh, you know with Brexit going on poor economy potentially um, I'll be uh, buying the uh, the US dollar if I can get some sort of pullback um, but doesn't mean that you can't get long on the pound there are obviously always opportunities to get long on the pound you know um, <clears throat> so just uh, choose the one that you want to get uh, um, you know your your directional bias and then uh, you know basically trade accordingly dollar sorry euro dollar and the euro dollar this was a uh, I know some traders in the group ended up getting in on, on this uh, on this trade I was waiting for it for ages and then again the move really happened um, over Christmas and New Year's and then I didn't really see it wasn't an entry it didn't take place unfortunately the rare times where you know these are uh, my my specific entries uh, hadn't occurred over Christmas and New Year's but um, yeah such is life there's always opportunities so we've got a bit of a supply zone here which prices came up into and then we've got demand zone there we've also really got this wider demand zone which is swing there got another another um demand zone there 
guess prices now are kind of contained between, I would say, this area here and that area there, and that there, and then. So at the moment, prices between this high, this range here, you can see where the range is. Oh, right here. That's where the range is. You can see where prices are being contained between. So again, this is a bargain area for the dollar, as it was a bargain area right here. You can see where prices are reacting. This is going to be a bargain area for the euro as you can see prices you know went up from here so if prices do come back down here and you want to be a buyer of the euro that's going to be and the best area to look to buy if not you've got the first area i guess is going to be around here you can see where prices made new highs higher highs and this potentially may be a decent area to look for you know any kind of uh long trade there if you think that the uh the euro is the currency to Bye. Moving on to the euro yen. Euro yen. So let's see what's happened here. And we have, I'll say some supply right there. Supply. Got, I guess we could drag this up, you know, to, to around here. There's a bit, maybe a level bit higher as well. No need to put that in just yet. So, uh, yeah, we've got bit of demand right there got some demand here we've got some demand right there so uh, probably say probably from there that's where it started from right so uh, where are we now we're looking to be buyers of the euro pretty much now's the time we do have a decent some decent confluence within this larger area of of uh demand you can pretty much see where you've got some support and resistance within that zone there so if prices do come down a little bit more you've got decent confluence so you've got support resistance 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 bit of support in this area so decent around it's a 120 round number with just thereabouts for a long trade if you're looking at short trades i think that's created like a new supply zone right there uh yeah i think that's pretty much it so you're looking for really a kind of like a pullback into you know this zone before looking at getting short this is a decent trade to the downside if risk is off you can see what's happening with the japanese yen across the board really you can see the you know the strength of the, of the yen um over the past you know day or so um as the market reacts to you know the risk off events uh I'd probably say if we're ranging probably between this high probably this is gonna be that low right there so that's where price is really kind of contained between at the moment so uh again it depends on which way you want to be a buyer so if you want to be a buyer of you know looking to buy the yen you'd have to kind of wait for if prices do pull back to that zone or if prices make a new lower highs lower lows in it you're looking for a pullback at some point into a newly created uh supply zone the euro is is terrible at the moment as far as economy wise but let's see what happens uh aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar, really similar to the uh, to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, where you had similar setup supply right there, nice area of supply prices came up into that zone. And again, I was saying to the guys in the Discord group, you know, that made a video. I said that that zone there is is really nice for a uh, for a sell. They're both quite strong currencies, to be fair, um, in a risk uh, on environment but just the way that prices you know went up over christmas into that zone i do like that. it was due for a reversal you can see pretty much it's moved um from a demand perspective you can see that's the last bearish candle before prices make new highs last bearish candle before prices make new highs 
last bearish candle before price make a new high. So those would be the zones to look for potential buy trades if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar there, looking to buy the US dollar, maybe a pull back into here, the better area would be a fresher area of supply. So anywhere around here, prices do pull back, look for anything, you know, some sort of short trade. Uh, again, the range from the high to the low is gonna be from here to all the way down at the lows here. So here we go. That's where prices are ranging between that high and that low, and they've been ranging between that since July 2019. So uh, that's where the range is at the moment. So that's that represents bargain area, potential bargain area for the US dollar. And this is this low here represents a potential bargain area for the Australian dollar. And this 50% level is what we would call fair value of the overall expensive and cheap area. Aussie. Uh, yen last pair so um, let's fib retracement what have we seen supply is there any supply there no so price didn't quite come up there and then we've got a bit of a move there so again this is going to be the last bullish close before prices make new lows and then if we're looking at the swing I think that's probably the highest swing of this whole region here so that's why I've pulled it back all that area of supply you can see where prices have kind of just maybe pierced through it but then you know reacted off that so that's decent um, when it comes to demand we are into a demand zone last bearish candle before prices make a new high <coughs> so that is demand and then we've got what candle is that what candle is that it's a bearish candle right there so then we've got last bearish candle before prices make a new higher right there also got this whole zone here so right now if risk is on if risk comes back on on the uh, Monday I highly doubt it but anything can happen um, then this looks like a really good buy very good buy um, but uh, probably look at the again the news over the weekend and start to uh, read some of the uh, publications and if again it's you know front page news come Monday Sunday night Monday morning chances are you know it's going to be um, risk off but doesn't mean that you know prices are going to fall it just depends on how the market reacts to risk off sometimes we get a risk off environment but we get a bit of a pullback which is still decent to be fair um in fact what i'm gonna do one second i'm gonna move this up here create a new supply zone right there reason why is because you've got lower highs lower lows so you've got to move down move up move down so that area there can can, can become uh supply right there um but yeah as i was saying sorry that the uh just because we have risk off doesn't mean that prices are gonna you know shoot all the way down you know, like this um sometimes risk can take you know um traders got to position themselves basically so um if everyone now is looking to get short you know as in, if and price prices do want to go lower then what needs to happen is there needs to be some stop hunting going on, market manipulation. So um, prices can rise in a risk off environment. And if it does, then that's brilliant because then it gives you a chance to get in short on the Japanese yen because, you know, this may you know not be going away anytime soon. Yeah. Um, especially if there's, you know, they're talking up, you know, war. Look at this. Uh, in falls red flag of war, you know, war we're talking about. This is the kind of uh, uh, language being used. So, you know, price, you know, may pull back if it does look at, look at it and as an opportunity. If you want to trade, if you want to buy the Japanese yen and be a, you know, buyer of a, of a safe haven currency, yeah, price start to drift up and then look for potential short trades. Or if prices, you know, make 
lower highs and lower lows like that then you're looking for a pullback into that supply zone which would then look for you know sell trades there if that was to happen so um that's gonna be it for this week and uh i hope you uh gain some uh, some insight and some knowledge into really you know the basics of um of supply and demand there's a lot more you know that you know i analyze and you know in in the uh, discord group and uh um with my traders um you know about supply and demand and how to really kind of read supply and demand and identify the best areas potential areas for supply and demand um strongest areas weakest areas etc and really the psychology that goes behind it market manipulations and the like so uh, yeah this is just a um i guess a beginner's uh you know 101 um lesson into uh, the weekly analysis hope you enjoyed it um sorry for my voice and the coughing um hopefully i'm going to be hopefully just rest in my voice now and uh guys take care if you have any questions uh please comment in the section box below don't forget to like subscribe and share with your fellow traders guys until the next video have a good one